The Plan Air Easton podcast is brought to you by the Avalon Foundation, enriching the lives of those on the eastern shore of Maryland through the arts. Visit avalonfoundation.org for details on events, performances, and educational programming offered throughout the year. Today's episode is sponsored by JFM Enterprises, providing distinctive ready-made and custom frames and moldings to the trade since 1974. Visit jfm.net to view their catalog of designs. Carl, know what's going on? Carl, have you done a podcast before? Uh, no, I haven't, no. Is this first podcast? My first podcast. So, Carl, do you remember Tim from your time here before? I can't see Tim because a big white round microphone is in front of his face. Oh. I'll, I'll, do just, I'll lift up my <laughs> face. All I can just, see is a cat. Can you see me now? <laughs> I do, yeah, I recognize I, can, I do recognize you, Tim, but it's a long time ago. Yes. Well, that is one sided because I, in addition to never not knowing a whole lot of these artists, I usually know their names or I've seen their face around. And Carl, I have never seen your face at Plenary East and I have no idea. Perhaps I didn't have glasses then. Uh, <laughs> nope, doesn't do it for me. <laughs> Marie, what do you want to start off with? I'm Marie. It's so nice uh, to meet you. You didn't know Marie either? You didn't meet him either? No, I I, I, I came after Carl. Who's Carl? I'm not exactly sure who he is, but he... <laughs> <laughs> he claims to know something about Planner Easton. <laughs> but he's been here before. I have. And he's coming again this summer. And I can't wait. Oh, Yay! that's great. That's great to hear. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Planner Easton Podcast. Marie, do you want to introduce yourself? Or do you think they know you already? Um, no, I've heard that I should probably introduce myself. This is Marie not all. I'm I, Tim Wagon. That was uh that was a fabulous conversation. Uh, Ooh, that's a lot of pressure. That's a we she really built the audience. It was just so fun. It was you know a lot of fun. I mean? He's really funny and it's a kind of, actually it's one of the we have we've never had a conversation like this one before. No, we haven't. We haven't. He's, Ladies and gentlemen, he's what? Carl Terry. How long have you been painting, Carl? Uh, well, I've been painting all my life, but seriously, for probably about 20 years. Yeah. So I was a late starter, you know, to, to take it seriously. Nice. What, what got you into it? What kind of painting got you into it? Uh, what got me into it is a strange story. Um, when I was at school, I wanted to follow art as a career, but my teacher and my parents both persuaded me not to, which at the time I thought was probably a, you know the wrong decision. But then about 20 years ago, I met my old art teacher and then I got back into it again and I haven't really looked back. It, you know, it's become more of an illness than a, anything else. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, well, so you were, you were good at art and your folks told you not to get into art. They wanted you to be a doctor or a lawyer. So, uh, well, no, my, um, my, my art teacher, first of all, I think he was – I hate to say it, because I don't think he might be listening, but he was a bit disillusioned. I think he wanted to be a painter and found that himself just teaching, like a lot of painters do. Uh-huh. And he said, you're never going to make a living. Do it for a hobby, but don't do it for a job. Oh, because well, he was down on his own life. I think so. And um, he was a great teacher, by the way. But And my parents, my dad just wanted me to get a proper job. I think he was worried that I'd never make a living. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that was a generation. Though. That was what it was yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? I think so. Um, because it's a little bit different now. Not probably not a lot different. I don't know what they tell them not to be nowadays. I remember when the golf. <laughs> don't <laughs> yeah. worry, dude, well, don't don't be this. <laughs> well, it was it was it was like you know, don't be a teacher, really. Don't be an artist. Don't be you know music or theater. Yeah. Go- golf pros, don't, golf don't pros, <laughs> golf pros used to be laughing. I mean, not in England, but even in America, golf pros were laughing. Now it's like one of the most respected positions around. You know. So yes. Yeah. It's interesting how things have changed. What do you say, Marie? What was your um what, what was your career that you that you migrated away from? Um I haven't migrated away fully, funny enough. I've got nice. I'm a very lucky person because I I have a, a business that I run or I manage and I go painting every day. So I don't have to although I sell pictures and it's gone beyond my wildest dreams, I still have the other career as well. I restore medieval buildings, so you know, things some of the buildings we work Ooh. on are 
Yeah, I mean, some of them over here, they were built before people settled in America. I mean, the average building that my company works on is probably 14, 1500, somewhere earlier than that. Right. Yeah. So, so what is that? What, I mean, what, how? Um... We could do a whole podcast just on that. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> what, what kind of stuff are you repairing? We just, my, my, my career has been very specialist because I live in southeast England uh -huh. in a county called Kent. All I do when I say I restore old buildings, I, 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 I mean I'd rather talk about art. But the um, the uh, <laughs> we will, all, we will. All we all my company does is we we're Kent peg tilers, so it's a bit like Thatchers, you know. So all we do in Kent in England, they have particularly small clay tiles that are five and a half by ten inches deep. Okay, they're peculiar, the smallest tiles in the world and in England, and because they're medieval tiles, so a lot of the tiles we use are. Are the original tiles that were on the roofs. Uh -huh. So that's all we do. But we do a lot of work for the National Trust and English Heritage and people like that in England. So it's a nice business. But what's great for me is it's interesting. There's quite an aesthetic to it. You know, there's a lot of craftsmanship involved. So for 10 years, I was on the tools. And now I manage my guys. And when they're working, I go off painting. So it's, it's excellent. Yeah, so the artist, the artistry is there, right? The artistry yeah, it is it, absolutely. You know, the guy, even the guys that work for me, they can't paint, but they have a real degree of artistry and an attention for detail. Otherwise, we just wouldn't get the work that we do. So I would save this for speed round, but what is the most intriguing thing that you've uncovered while you're doing a renovation? Funny enough, we, we don't really uncover that much. I mean, no? we find a lot we, because they're old houses. We find lots of things like old shoes. <laughs> and like old old children's shoes. Well, there's an old what? What were people well, doing with from, children's shoes? Well, well no, from well, the they used, to, they used to put little shoes above doorways and in the roofs to ward off witches and evil spirits. We find lots of things like that. Is that right? And, we find, and there's another thing, often or not, in the old roofs. They used to put a bottle in the end of the ridge. Do you know what the ridges are? The tiles that run along the top. They would put a bottle in and put a note or something in. But the story goes that people would only put a a bottle in the end of a ridge if it was a bad customer to warn other people off. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Whether it's true or not, I don't know. Right. Anyway. Well, yeah. uh, we'll get off back onto the art for a second. Um, but um, so the good thing I think for me, and it is, um, I used to, um, I used to be a bit embarrassed about it because a funny, it's a funny combination. But the thing I find with uh, most of my friends are professional artists, full-time painters, but. I don't have to worry. It's great if I sell some pictures, but I don't have to worry about the financial side of it. So it does mean that when I go and paint, right. I paint for the pure joy of it. And I don't try and second guess what people are going to buy. I paint what moves me or what tickles me. And I think that's a real, I'm really lucky in that respect. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then what, what, what uh, when you got back into it, was it, did you go straight to uh, uh, landscape painting or did you paint other things? Straight, straight, straight to landscape painting, yeah. I mean, my art teacher, Chris Danes, who I'm still very good friends with, he um, he never really painted outdoors, but the first year that we started painting together, he bought me a book by Edward Sego, you know, the great East Anglian landscape painter. And on the front cover, when I opened the book, there's a guy holding a French easel. That is, you know, Edward Sego. Uh -huh. And I thought that really appealed to me, you know, because I'm an outdoor sort of person. And I bought both myself and him a French easel. And to be honest, I just haven't stopped. You know, it's uh, there's there's not a day goes by where I don't paint. For twenty years. Yeah. Well, if it's I don't I'm not I say that I'm, that's not quite true because I hate I don't particularly like painting the rain. I love painting the snow, and it's always cold here compared to where you are. But um, yeah, if the weather's if the weather allows, and I'm outside painting. I'm surprised you, haven't I? <laughs> I can see by your face. I know. I'm like, gosh, so many. I don't even know where to start now. So uh, no, I don't even know what thread to pull. Um, well, what did you have down there? I mean, let me. Um, I, I could talk about England and like the scene there. Oh, no, and like, I totally. Well, I was born this, in England, so where, that's kind where, of. Whereabouts were you born, Marie? I was born uh, right off of the uh, Lake and Heath Air Force Base. In oh, Suffolk. I know. Yeah. yeah. I drive. I drive past there on my way up to Norfolk every year. Oh, and nice. They've got, they've got the American Air Base there, so we watch yeah. the. Um, F-15 to things take off. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah. We um, we just went like five, um, I guess maybe, gosh, maybe it's about eight years since the last two years don't count. But um, we saw it. We stopped in the little yeah. town. Everybody stops, and... don't they? Everyone stops along the road. Yeah. Great. And what they do now, the last time I was there last year, 
they all take off together and they thought, oh, they're not doing it. Then they make a show for the people that are watching. So they come in really low, fly along the runway, probably 20 foot high off the, the, the ground, and sure. then do a vertical <laughs> yeah. thing at the end. It's quite impressive. That's very yeah. cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, I love it up there. And Norfolk is a wonderful part of the country for painting East Anglia. Yeah, it was it was really beautiful. We really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, um I've got one if you want to go ahead. Yeah. I was just after romantic as England is, uh, you, know, you know, just sitting there talking about it. Well, romantic um, for you. Exactly. You <laughs> exactly. Exactly. For you, it's just. Aww. It's romantic for me to it's come awesome. to Eastern Coast America. That's, that's, what, I want, that's what I wanted <laughs> yeah. to ask. What is the romance in that? What, is, what do you love oh, about that? I just, I just, I just, I just do you know what, what the, the weird thing? When I first came to Eastern, I'd never been to America before. And it was so it was so welcoming because obviously we share the same language and a lot of the same history. It felt like I was it was an extension of where we are in a, a funny sort of way. It felt like home to me. I wasn't prepared for it. Well, and especially because we borrowed all of your exactly. names for proper towns, yeah. <laughs> especially on the East Coast. The East I noticed South. It's quite a historic town, and parts of it sort of reminded me a bit of England in a way. And I noticed on the map that you have a St. Michael's, um, like, just yeah. north of you, don't you? <laughs> About three miles away from me. Three miles. <laughs> what were you expecting? I don't know. I, I don't know really what I was expecting. I think um, I wasn't expecting it to be so hot. <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> Sorry. That, that knocked the socks off me. I think it was like, <laughs> it was, I mean, it wasn't just hot. It was humid as well. Yeah. You know, it was... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was in the 40s, so I'm, I'm going to be a bit more prepared this time. <laughs> it's a <laughs> special breed that lives here year-round, yeah. for sure. <laughs> but what I was, I mean, I was really, everybody was so friendly, too. And I think um, maybe, I mean, I came over with a friend of mine, Roger Della, so there were two, two of us, two Brits. And that was good in one way, but not so good in another, because it, if you're with somebody else, it, it it doesn't make it quite as easy to make friends. And I think coming on my own this year, I'll have to make friends or I'm going to be lonely. Oh, good. Yeah, well, yeah, that would be well, easy enough for you to do, I'm sure. Well, and I know that there are alumni artists that are looking yeah. forward to seeing yeah. you again. Yeah. Good. You're coming back as as an entry, though, as an alumni artist at entry? You're in this. When did you get in no, last time? No, he's in. When did you get in last 2011. time? 2011. Oh, wow. 2011. Wow. Yeah, so, 11 wow. years. That's what I thought. And I've applied, um, I think... I haven't applied every year. I've applied about three other times and haven't got in. So this year, I thought I'd try, and then I was really I was gobsmacked when I found out I was coming. <laughs> Especially, it's going to be a treat after COVID and not being. Oh yeah, uh, man! It's going to be a crazy it's summer cool. here. Be a That's crazy, be fantastic, crazy Eastern but summer. But I do, I do follow it every year, and um, I mean, I did. I don't know the year before uh, I was came to Plain Air Eastern. This is quite a funny story. It's a bit. I came to. Um, Plain Air Eastern a year before with Chris Danes, my art teacher, because uh -huh. at the Academy Museum they had um, a PAPA workshop. Uh -huh. you know, right, had, yeah, uh, Plain Air Painters of America workshop. I knew I knew nothing about it, but I said to Chris, I don't know, it's just, I think sometimes life has a funny way of working out that sometimes things are fortuitous, they just happen. Uh -huh. And I, um, I saw online, I don't know, I was really interested in American, when I painted outside here, there wasn't much of a scene going on. There still isn't as much as there is in America. Uh, and I looked online and saw this plein air workshop advertised at, in Eastern at your museum there. Uh -huh. I didn't know any of the artists. I didn't know any of them at all. Okay. But I, pers I persuaded. I said to my friend, my art teacher, Chris, do you fancy coming to America with me? Because I want to sign up to this plein air workshop just so that I can get to America. And when we got there... Um, we didn't choose our – everyone else had chosen their favourite artist and we just put whoever you want us to go with. So we ended up with a wonderful man <laughs> for the first day. Everyone said, who are you? Who have you asked to be with? We said, well, we haven't asked. We just said we go with whoever will have us because we don't know the artist. So the first <laughs> – on the evening orientation, the first evening, they said you're going to be with um, John Budachin. You know, so – and they we had John Budachin on the Monday – John Budicin on the bed, John Budicin every day, uh -huh. apart from one day. And um, he's a fantastic fellow. I really like him. I'm still friends with him now. But the thing the thing that was disappointing is they they set the um, – whilst we were happy with John, they uh -huh. said we had to go to the same farm every day for four days. So the first day that we got there, it was just a flat farm, flat land with two big silos. And my idea of going to where you are is to go down to Tillman Island and see the old crab boats and the skipjack schooners and have yes. a bit of variation. So we did the first day, and I said to John, I said, John, 
as much as I like Payton with you and you're a lovely guy, can we can we go somewhere else tomorrow or there? Because we we want to explore the area. And he said, I'm sorry, it's all been set. So I I don't know. I just <laughs> I, 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 I said I said to Chris, we've come a long way to paint. I don't want to paint the same farm. So I phoned the organizer up and I said, I'm really sorry, it's lovely, and I love all you guys and everyone that I've met is lovely, but we're going, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna join the workshop tomorrow. We're gonna go and do our own thing. So we Chris, my art teacher, was mortified, said, you can't do that, it's rude. And I said, well, look, we've flown a long way and we want to paint boats and rivers and different things. These people are never going to see us again. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, and I thought they won't be that. They've had our money, they won't be that bothered. So, so we, 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 I, I signed out of the workshop and then that evening to sort of uh, celebrate, we went down to Tillman, not to celebrate in a nasty way, to celebrate that we would, we could paint boats and things. Uh-huh. We went down to Tillman Island and we were set up with our easels painting and this chap came along and, and said hello and they said, I'm a painter, do you mind if I paint next to you? And I said, be my guest. Anyway, <laughs> it, was, uh, it, it was Don Demers, you know, Don Oh Demers. yeah, Don, yeah, 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 and, yeah. Uh, we had a real laugh and Don said, he said, um, where are you guys from? I said, from England. He goes, you're not the two maverick painters that have just left. The, the worst of he said, yes. We had a great evening. We, had, we painted and we had dinner. That's and then great. the following evening, Don said, look, we don't want you to have a bad experience, but why don't I introduce you to all the other tutors and workshop, the other painters, and we'll meet up every evening. So when the workshop finishes at four o'clock, because we can't, we've already got enough people on each day, we'll meet up with you and we'll paint privately together for the first, you know, every night. So from half past four every evening, I paint with all the guys. So there's, there's Skip and George, Skip Wickham and George Strickland and John Wilson and Don. We all meet up every single evening and paint together. And after that... Um, I got they, they've been really kind friends. I've been painting with them two or three times in America since, you know, privately. But that's yeah. what made me want to come back the following year to Plenum Eastern. That's nice. a great story. Yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. Um, so had, had, had I not have um, made that decision, it probably wouldn't have. I probably wouldn't have met any other American painters, and maybe we'd have gone home. And although we'd have had a great time, it wouldn't have been. I've got a special connection to Eastern now. It's one of the highlights of. My life has not been there. Here we are, eleven years later, talking over I video know. phone. I know. <laughs> Planning your return. Listen, I can't wait. <laughs> Carl, we're going to take a quick break for an announcement, real quick, about the upcoming Plenary Easton. Thank you. I know Marie's got some questions to ask you on the other side. One of the ones is I want to uh, ask you as well is we're going to find out what how Carl's painting has changed from 2011 to 2022. This is Plenary Easton podcast. We'll be right back. The 18th Annual Plein Air Easton Competition and Festival takes place July 15th through the 24th, 2022, when 58 of the top plein air artists of our time will spend one week in Easton, Maryland, competing for thousands of dollars in prizes. Immerse yourself in a week of art exhibits, receptions, free demos, and panel discussions. Purchase exceptional and brand new art for that blank wall. Come for the art and make your summer memories at Plein Air Easton. The full event schedule can be found online at plenaireaston.com. I really want to know if if there is a plenaire scene in uh, in the UK. Is, it, yeah, it's tell gathering us about pace. that. It's gathering pace really quickly now. I think. Um, 10 or 15 years ago, you'd hardly, if I went to London even, I wouldn't see a painter. Uh-huh. Uh, there's, been, there's, there's a couple of painting groups. There's a painting group called the Whopping Group of Artists, of which I'm a member. And that's the oldest remaining in plein air. That's been established since 1942. But it's capped at 25 members, so it's like Dead Man's Shoes. But <laughs> right. apart, apart from that, I didn't really meet any painters. But the last, I think often not in the things that happen in America, Follow on over here about ten years. You always seem to be about ten years ahead of us. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, well, is 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 uh? Or, or... So, do I need to come over there and start a plein air at East? End? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. we well, yeah. Carl. Plein air, plein air Rye would be fantastic. You, you guys, I know. You guys could sit, go down to Seton after you work every day planning it and have a uh, uh, ale have outside. A pint. <laughs> <laughs> the last ten years, things have really gathered pace, and I think even um, you know, we start that. 
there's a lot more of American kit available here, and you know you can buy Plein Air magazine over here. So it's it's gathering pace. It's getting really popular, especially with the younger generation too, which is good. That's are awesome. There, are there yeah. um, organized paint outs or competitions? Well, there is. There is, there are. There are not 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 as much as there are in America. But uh, about three years ago, I was one of the guys that one of a group of twelve people that set up Brit Plein Air, which is um as a new group of British players. Sure, yeah. mm-hmm. And we have a, we have a show every year in London and the mail galleries. And then we, through that, we organize paint outs that are free for anybody to come to. Right. So it is gathering pace. And then this year, I don't know, the end of last year, there's a new group in London called Plein Air Paints of London. So, yeah, it's gathering pace massively. Nice. So do you yeah. think, do you think, like here, I mean, we haven't got anyone like Eric Rose over here. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I think, no. I think I think he's. I mean, I think he's he's very conscious of what's going on over here. But he hasn't really. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts doing things here as well. Right. We yeah. Haven't. Yeah. You should try to get on that show. But because <laughs> yeah. um, that's a that's a big guy. But but my the thing is is. <laughs> Aren't, there probably are, though, in your mind, though, right, Carl? Just as many people over there who want to play, play plein air, they just don't even know it's a thing. Because that's the thing that we found out. Yes, it's like yes, we didn't know yes. anything about plein air until we came no. from California. And then all of a sudden it's everywhere. It's in, yeah. you know, Easton and Roanoke. And, you know, it's, it's not. Yeah. It's and not, if your town doesn't have a plein yeah. air competition, kind of, you're calling up the other competitions and asking them how to start them. Are there just as many yeah. artists over there who don't know about it and people, you know, in the art, that sort of thing? Are they painting different stuff over there? They're just not interested in plein air. It's, They've been painting plein air outside too long. I think there's a massive history of plein air painting in England, but for the last, up until, I mean, people, they, the last 40, 50 years in England, the, the art scene has definitely changed. And actually, the sort of stuff that I've been doing and, and my colleagues have been doing has been seen to be a bit old-fashioned. There's an awful lot of really bad conceptual art over here, which is really popular. Uh huh. I say bad. That's only that's subjective. I think it's bad, but hey, like the bat signal, Carl Terry says it's bad. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> well, there's a thing. There's a really good artist over here, a brilliant artist, one of the most successful painters in England, called Andrew Gifford. And I, I've got one of his books. I've never actually met him, but he's a you know he's a bit of a superstar. Uh-huh. But he he says something that sort of resonated with me for about the last twenty years. The word beauty over here is almost seen as ugly. Everything, if it's art, it has to be controversial or ugly. Or uh-huh. if you say it's a picture, people don't really. The art critics, particularly, are not in love. In, not in love with that sort of stuff. But it's gaining pace, and it's getting more. As they in England, we don't really, you know, that old-fashioned art education where you go and learn to paint. That's almost a thing of the past. A lot of the art teachers now can't even draw, and I shouldn't say that because they're going to be listening to some of these people. But. <laughs> Is there, um, Carl, is there uh, a a place or an area or town that I would go to that seems like pretty art forward? Like I've heard a little bit about Brighton area. If there's a a Brighton scene, if there's a plenty of scene in Brighton, I don't know about it. And that's only about an hour from me. Well, maybe not. Maybe not just plein, plein what do you mean, air, what do you mean but just art. Art forward. What do you mean art forward? Like, I, like Easton's kind of art forward, right? No. Like we're we're very. What do you mean? We have an art. We have an art scene. <coughs> like we have an art museum. We have musical arts. We have visual arts. We just have a art hip art, art town. Art. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Brighton is that place. It's got a lot more art galleries and shops, and it's quite. Um, what's the word? It's an arty town for sure. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, well, where right. I live, where I live in Rye, you know, it's a medieval town, one of the oldest towns in um, England, and that's got quite a good art scene. There's quite a lot of artists sort of gravi- gravitate to this area because it's beautiful, you know, and we're so close to London. Yeah. How far are you from London? We're only sixty miles. Right. So nice. in English terms, it seems a long way, but that's the other thing I found when I came to Easton. I thought, oh, well, look, I'll go from. I go to East, I go to Oxford for the day, and on the map it looks tiny. <laughs> it's only nine miles. Point. Is it? Oh, I seem to remember it being further. Both <laughs> 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 so long and straight, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, so I don't know if you've heard of an American painter called Stuart Fullerton. He's a lovely fella. Yeah. He Argo. He's a member of the Pallet and Chis- Pallet and Chisel Club, but he um he come he's come to stay here for a couple of times, and uh. One day we'd been out painting and it was a bit shaky and um, I didn't realise, but he spoke to my wife and said, um, Joe, can you have a quiet word with Carl? 
Uh, so he goes, what's up? He says, oh, I'm absolutely, I'm still shaking. I'm terrified. He said, he does 60 miles an hour along these lanes and our country lanes are one vehicle wide. <laughs> 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 and he said, I had to close my eyes for the whole journey home. <laughs> our roads aren't like farm tracks. Our little lanes where we are here, they seriously one one vehicle wide. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, we see that some of that <laughs> style in the movies that we see from, yeah. from shot over in Europe over here. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, uh, really, you got some. Yeah, so it sounds like. Um, I'm sorry. What did you say, Carl? Are we, are we still doing a podcast? Yeah, we're, we're still rolling. We're, we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> we're rolling. So, so uh, yeah, you've been working the whole time. We're not going to. I thought we were having can you, break. can you just say everything you just said over again, please? <laughs> Wait. Now we're going to record it. Yeah. Uh, right. 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 <laughs> Oh, Sounds like if you if we were just catching up, the, you want an official uh, um, intro to the podcast. We found that the punks are still taking over the uh, <laughs> art scene ever in London still, and, and they still got. The, the, never mind the bullocks. Um, yeah, when, I, when I came to East, when I came to Eastern last time, I um, my dad gave me a tip. He said, "When you hire a car at the airport." Ask for the smallest economy car that you can get because they won't have any small economy cars, and then you can get an upgrade <laughs> for free or a little money for a bigger car. Yeah, there you go. So I got I got to Washington, and they said, "Oh, here's your car. It's like a a Buick sedan." And I said, "I don't want a Buick sedan. I want my little Ford Fiesta, my uh, economy car." Right. And they said, "Well, we haven't got an economy car." Well, I said, "Well." If, if I can't have an economy car, I don't want a Buick sedan. I want something a bit nicer. And they said, well, what have you got in mind? I said, like a Mustang or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Did they give it to you? Not quite. They made, <laughs> like another 150 bucks. But it was, um, I got this brand new like Mustang coupe. And uh, nice. when I got the, the first person I met when I got to Eastern was Tim Bell. Or uh -huh. Tim Bell now. Right. Really, really good friends. And he just said, Bloody redneck from England. Look at you. Turned <laughs> <laughs> up in this white Mustang. So I'm hoping I might be able to do something similar this year. Did yeah. you Did you find it very? Uh, I f I don't know. I found it very shocking going to the UK and them just like filling out the car <laughs> rental paperwork and being like, "Okay, you're on your yeah. own." And we were like, yeah. oh, <laughs> "Like we don't even know how to drive on the no. on the other side of the road." And yeah, is that weird for you to drive? I mean, I'm not. No, I didn't mind that because if we go into Europe, we have to drive on the oh, other okay, side. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, it gotcha, take, gotcha. It takes about ten minutes to get used to it. Gotcha, gotcha. The gotcha. thing I did get, I found difficult, was getting out of Washington. Now, yeah. I didn't have a sat nav, and I, the roads are so big that was a bit strange. Well, it's built so you can't attack it. Is how it is. So it's very yeah. confusing to get. I nearly it. died though. I mean, I, I, I bet. Shouldn't, yeah. I shouldn't, <laughs> I shouldn't, no, I shouldn't admit this on on um, on air. But you know, the speed limit there's fifty five, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. So when I when I was really lucky with my host family because I stayed at um, I stayed with some of the main sponsors, Bill and Doris Nielsen. Yes. And it's uh, yeah, most yeah. amazing house, you know, down near Tillman Island. And they're one, great people. Yeah, they're fantastic, and um, the the first or second night I was there, I thought, the roads are empty. There's no police. There's nobody here. It's a dead straight road. I'm going to see how fast this Mustang goes. Right? You like speed. Well, yeah, I don't mind it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he already and admitted thought, he's a lead foot. I mean, I'm just I trying thought, to see. I'm going to see thought, how fast he's going to go here I in a second. Thought, I'm not going to get caught because it's 12 o'clock at night. It's a dead straight road. So I floored it, you know, from that stretch from St. Michael's to Tillman Island. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. uh, I really was going fast, and a deer jumped out in front of me. Oh my god! How so I, swer I swerved to miss it. Holy! Missed it, but I had a double blowout and blew both the tires out. No way! How fast were you going, man? <laughs> I'm not telling you on air. Oh my god! <laughs> well, it, it wouldn't go much faster. <laughs> I was gonna. That's why I was Did asking. you get the insurance addendum? No, I had to pay for the tires. Yeah. yeah. You didn't so, wreck. Pardon? You no, didn't... no, didn't know. Man, that's pretty lucky going that no, fast yeah. there, man. Yeah, hopefully... no, that's what I was saying. Like, you're, are you a race car driver or something like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is I, don't that what... I don't even know why I did it, but I did. You know, it's a moment of madness, I think. But it was well... fun. And no, no, no! It's a good, good road. News, yeah, and the it good news is it would have been fun if I'd been caught for speeding. Like, I think that would have been yeah. awful. So hopefully you, that's out of your system, so that's we won't have a repeat system. of that this time. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> and that was in July when you were here. Yeah, because you, you probably scared the deer. You were going so fast, it woke the deer up. And, <laughs> I know they were like, they what? <laughs> they don't usually run in July that often here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was probably a little crazy in the head. 
Yeah. Um, Not Carl, no, it was, the deer. It was, it was really good, but... Um, <laughs> That's a lot yeah, of fun. We, we, it was a lovely place to stay, but I think um, Bill and Doris, the second night we were there, they... Um, they had some sort of family tragedy, so they had to leave us on our own, which was a bit of a shame. Right, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a close community here for sure. So uh, yeah. when things like that happen, everybody kind of knows about it. it gets felt around. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, all the way. Carl, how has your art changed from 2011 to 2022? Well, I'd like to think I've got a lot better, but <laughs> I'm nowhere near. You know, you never get as an artist, you never get where you you wanting to. But um, yeah, it's definitely changed. I'm. A, I think. Um, I've done an awful lot of painting since then, so I think it's got. I think I'd like to think it's got bolder, you know, and it's and uh, it, I'll try and you know try and say more with less. I still I still struggle with knowing when to stop. Yeah, you know, I think that's a that's a an age old problem for artists because you think one more stroke is going to make it better, and True. actually less less is definitely more. Um, Skip Whitcomb is. A, I've been on a. I just because of COVID and we couldn't do anything, and I was going to go and see Skip Whitcomb last year because we've become really good friends and I've painted with him in Colorado, and we couldn't see him, so I was signed up to one of his online color classes because I thought I've never done the color charts, I've been too lazy to do that, but uh-huh. that has a, that has been a revelation to me, if I'm honest. And um, he has a his oh, mantra nice. is his mantra is the um, the simpler the statement, the stronger the message, and that's really. It, that just in the last six months, that's really that's really how my work. Carl, who um, who inspires you as far as like artist, m- m- maybe even a master, an old master that's not. Well, do you mean when you're talking about modern or old ones? Because there's so many artists though, and we're just around here. I've got about a thousand books. There's so many people that I'm inspired by. I mean, I think. Um, I think old masters, like it, like who inspires <laughs> you of the old masters. Oh, old masters. One of my favourite artists. If you talk about England, I love um, I love the work of William Nicholson. Okay. So William Nicholson, he was the, probably the I think one of the finest painters of landscapes and still lives. And then oh, there's so many artists. I love. I think um, I think what sort of really influences my work is actually being connected to, to American art as well, because a lot of the artists I know here seem to be quite inward looking. They don't look as far outwards as I seem to have done, and I've. I've been like discovering over the last ten years all the California impressionists and Guy Rose and all those people, you know. And I love. Mm-hmm. I think some of that influence of some of the Americans is actually a lot of people over here say my work looks American, you know, because I'm. I've been inspired oh. by it, you know. So that's interesting. A, yeah, it is weird. A lot of people say, "Oh, your work's looking quite American." I, I suppose you, you know, if you're influenced by something, it's going to inspire your work, isn't it? So, what do you but, what do you think what do you think that that is? What is that nuance that makes something look American? Yeah, how, or how do you paint a sky? Think, well, how do you paint a sky American? Well, not just that. I think I think the American. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's something about the American personality and you're quite. Happy people are the ones I've seen. You know, be careful what I say. <laughs> but you're not scared of colour. You know, over here, there's a at the moment, and actually, there's this. Um, I would say, from, from what I look around, a lot of people over here don't celebrate colour. A lot of the British painters are really into tone. You know, the toneless painters, and they, a lot of the painters are as much as they're lovely and they're subtle. They wouldn't. I wouldn't say, even nowadays, are not what I call a lot of colourists about. There's a lot of tonal painting. And I really love colour, you know, so I think that's probably why I like the American painters because the colour's a big thing over there, isn't it? I think there's a lot more, people study a lot more in America and the, the artists over there tend to celebrate doing workshops and, you know, they go and do study with other painters more than they do here. There's not that much of a scene for that here. Right. The only people, I mean, I've done a few workshops, well, but yeah, generally yeah. The, ones, the ones we do over here, they'd be mainly amateur painters, you know, you know, retired people coming and they haven't got much idea most of them that come on the workshops but over there a lot of the professional artists will seek out other professional artists to go on their workshops just if they just find one little thing that affects their work right so that's that's a great thing i think right that's interesting yeah you should uh you should become the famous english painter who paints america (laughs) (laughs) the whole niche yeah Yeah. i mean um, of, my gen- of my generation, I think I've painted. I don't know many painters that. Uh, there's not many painters here that have been painting in America. There's exactly. one of my friends. There's one of my friends uh, that I paint a lot with over here, Heidi Jo Summers. She's been to America and painted a few. Uh, I think she's done the Forgotten Coast and things like that. Yeah, yeah I've definitely heard her name. Yeah, she's she's 
she's she's she's she's known and another Vicky Norman she's been in America but other than that I don't know any of the current crop of plein air painters that go to America and I'm always saying look you want to go to America there's a big scene out there right so, but, um, people are just, happy yeah and I want to go to England because I want to but I want to see their scene you know what I mean so yeah. um I guess uh you know I don't know which place does more tourism if there's more Americans that go to England or more English people that come to come to uh america but it certainly feels like I, I want to get over to england at some point for sure yeah. and i've just and i never really felt that way at all just over the last like 10 or 15 years it's just kind of become sort of a i don't know romantic place to me um could you accommodate like 10 or 12 of us if we <laughs> yeah, uh yeah, if we I all could. came over <laughs> uh, yeah i could, yeah, I could. Yeah. Well, but, um, you could do your first workshop there um but i guess i mean where i live i mean it's a beautiful i don't know if you've heard of him but my neighbor it's probably he's probably the most famous living landscape painter in England, and he lives literally across the field from my house. And his name's Fred Cooming. Cooming. So, Fred Cooming. He's like a he's um he's a member of the Royal Academy over here, and he's he's ninety now, but he's he's such an amazing painter, and I'm lucky enough to see him most weeks. And you know he, that's another inspiring and he's, painter. He's the most he's the most probably arguably the most famous English landscape painter. I think he probably is the most famous living. Pa- Landscape painter in England, right? Gotcha. Now, yeah. That's cool to know. That's cool to know. Yeah, but he's this is my neighbour, Kumin, C U M I N G. But he's um, I'm surprised he's not more well known in America because he does have shows in Kentucky and places. Oh, nice. He's brilliant. Yeah. What do you think of his work? I think it's fantastic. Yeah. What is it about it? It's poetic. He's got a fantastic sense of design and colour, and it's just it's just a it's just amazing painter. Carl, with the um, with the contrast in in different styles that we were just talking about, are you excited to see the final exhibit at the end of the week? Yes, I really art? am. Yeah, I really am. Yeah, I'm really. It was that was a that was a highlight last time. I was, it, was, it was mad actually. The collectors' evening when we finished. Yeah. The people queuing up to come in and it was like a buying frenzy. It was. I've never seen anything like that over here. It is. And then people having buzzers so they can go upstairs and look through the rats. <laughs> <and> <laughs> It was, when I tell people about that in England, they don't believe it. They think I'm like they think they're telling a tall story. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> but it is true. You know, the, some of the I mean, some of the events that you threw as well. I mean, they were. I remember we went to one of the finals of collectors uh, day at the weekend afterwards. It was the most amazing. It's like a festival. It's amazing. Yeah. Really yeah, I loved it. Every minute of it, I loved. And everywhere. One one thing I did do last time. On the first evening, you gave everybody like a, a map and said these people have opened up their ranches and houses, and you can go and paint there. Most days, I went Private somewhere and see one of those. Yeah, yep. yeah absolutely, yeah. absolutely. They were so welcoming, it was fantastic. Well, and I hope we kept the things that um, that worked really well. And yeah. but since you've been here uh, a 10, 10, 11 years, we have definitely improved some things. So no okay. more of that flipping through the yeah. accordion we, style. Yeah. Of... yeah, we don't have the buzzers anymore. We got we no, were a little we bit bigger, it's spaced it out a little better. And it was just again, like you said, <laughs> so we didn't have to have customers waiting in crazy lines for buzzers to get in. They can all kind of go in and yeah. pick out who they want, that sort of thing, um, or who they want to look at, what artists they want to take a look at. If, they, if they've seen them during the week, it's really it's 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 a little bit different, but just as much fun. It hasn't gotten any more you know it's just just continue to grow each year so hopefully yeah. you'll love what you what you come across this year um, the whole thing the whole thing was great i remember the other the um, quick draw was quite exciting as well at the end of the week that was good right um i want to ask one more question i think marie's got a couple of rapid fires or something like that sure. marie, whatever. Okay. Yep. um and marie you can ask whatever you want but my, it's you started off this interview carl by saying you know I, it was happenstance that I got back in it. I saw a teacher, and I haven't looked back since. And I, yeah. you know, um, what has what has fully, even going beyond your 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 um, tile work um, for the for <coughs> restoring historic buildings? Yeah. What artistically has getting back into the art world like this meant to you personally in your life? Personally, oh, it's given me great balance in my life, and it's made me. Um, I tell you, the biggest thing it's done for me it's made me really appreciate life because. Being a painter, I mean, part of being a painter is learning to see. And then when you sit and look or stand and look at something intently for two hours, it makes you appreciate every single bit of nature. You know, even I used to hate the winters, you know, when it's cold and wet and miserable and the snow. It was nice for a day or two, but now I love everything. I love every time of year and I love, I can't wait to wake up, you know. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Is it an opportunity to be in the moment 
it very much is. It makes you feel, I think, um, I think when you're in the zone, when you're painting and it's going well and you get in the zone and you do something you're proud of, you hardly can hardly remember doing it. You get so into it. It's a bit like meditation. Or exactly. That's what me. I was going to say. Just, um, and sometimes that doesn't off, that doesn't happen enough. You know, you have to be, I think the only thing I would say is because I've got a busy life as well as my painting. If I've got too much on my mind, I can't paint. I have to clear, I have to be in a good frame of mind. Right. But yeah, no, it's been really life enriching. And that part of it, the, the joy of, I mean, everything about paint, I love the smell of it. I love the feel of the paint. Uh, I love doing it. And more than that, I love the camaraderie that I've, I've got I've got so many more friends now that uh, have got something in common with me, and I think uh, right. there's a, a Skip Whitcomb gave me a really famous American book we hardly see over here called The Art Spirit by Robert Henry, and that said or Henry, and it says in there it talks about this brotherhood of painters, and that wherever you go in the world, if you meet another painter, you've all automatically got something else in common with them, you know, and it's right. uh, yeah, it's they're like family, they're like yeah, I've like a brotherhood, it's amazing. Well, it's a language you can only speak with people who understand it a lot of times exactly. too. Yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, so uh, I'll just when you talk about that seeing thing, uh, you know, I, I, we're doing a play right now. It kind of works because it's Agatha Christie play. So you're, uh, she's yeah. English, and I can bring this English sort of theme in here to talk about. But it's the whole idea of getting the actors to really see what's going yeah. on in front of them, really yeah. for real, not as yeah. as uh, as so that ability to see things like that that you said you see them differently, right? Yeah, I think it is, and I think uh, I think that that learning to see, and I think um, it, to paint well. If you look at the the best painters, make it look really easy and simple, but the best painters, I think, look harder than anybody else. You right. know, they said that about Monet, didn't they? They said Monet, yeah. it was only an eye, but what an eye! He just, um, you really have to look. You have to look really, really hard. Yeah, and it'll, it'll, and, it'll um, affect you. And there's another famous quote. I don't know who said it, but that is really true. And it said. Um, there was never a masterpiece painted by a lazy painter. So to paint, you really have to concentrate and you really have to look. So people, these pictures that look fantastic and simple by the great masters, they weren't simple at all. You know, they're quite, the simplest ones are sometimes strangely more complex. Yeah. That's what really gets me. What, what's this quote? No, there, there's never been a great portrait painted by a lady painter? <laughs> no, what do you say? That. I said there's never been a great painting. Uh-huh. Painted by a lazy painter. Not a, a lazy, lady. okay, a lady <laughs> painter. <laughs> that's, like... that's, that's it. That's it. No women are going to speak to me there. Yeah, I know that. that. Well, that's why I thought you got know, yourself Tim into it. I was like, gonna... lazy. no, I'm never, just. Tim's taking up the call. Painted just... by a lazy painter. For all you lazy eared Americans, he said <laughs> lazy, not lady. The, the, good, uh, the good thing of that is if you're, if you're painting and you're doing something half hearted and you're yes, thinking, no, no. Uh, this would do, or that that one stroke, one brush mark can ruin the whole painting. So you have to really be on it and focus. No, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. I was, uh, I, I was and the just... same thing. A lot of your listeners, they'll have the same experiences as me. But everybody comes up to you as a painter and said, "Oh, it must be so relaxing." You know, and it's not, <laughs> it's not relaxing. It's great, but it's not relaxing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Thank Carl. We're gonna go. Uh, re take it over. What were you? least prepared for was the heat like the biggest thing that shocked you coming the, the, here the humidity or... and the heat yeah but definitely well, i wasn't prepared for that oh and there's midges tick midges ticks ticks yeah oh, right. and that surprised me because everywhere i wasn't prepared for that i turned up some places and we're gonna call some them of the painters on. some of the painters have like tarpaulins they pitched them on the ground and sprayed yeah. the air around them i wasn't prepared for that <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for dousing all the air around me with the toxic mist. Yeah, we learned that. Stand on a tablecloth. Right, we learned that technique this that year. I think was like stand on a tablecloth and spray that with the, the tick juice or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have that over here. Well, that, that said, I think um, we do get ticks. I mean, a friend of mine's a painter and he got Lyme disease, so that must have yeah. come from the tick. But you don't see them like you do over there. Right. Yeah. There was a lot of building going on, and whenever you move into the woods and you do that a lot, you'll move the ticks around, so they go <laughs> to different places, you know? So if you're down in generally, whenever it's windy, you can get them too. So, um, and we have a lot of Lyme disease around here. It's one of the... Yeah. So hopefully England doesn't have that problem. <coughs> no, uh, we don't want Rocky Mountain sin. Spotted Fever. You got that? Alpha <laughs> Gale, you name it. It's all, it's all awful. Um, you ready for a speed round? Let's go. Speed round. Here go. it is. Oh, this should be fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, Carl, dogs or cats? Dogs. 
Do you have? A I would have said cats twenty years ago. Oh, oh. see how we've changed. What, ha- what I'm happened? Dog, what I'm happened? A dog, I'm a dog convert. I mean, we had cats all the time when I was a kid. We had cats, and my, we didn't have dogs. But my wife always had dogs. And then we, when we had kids, uh, my wife said, "I want a dog. I want a dog." And I kept saying, "No, no, 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 no." And then one day she just wore me down, you know. And I said, "Oh, for God's sake, go get a dog." <laughs> <laughs> I came home, and there's a little puppy. But no, the dogs are definitely more giving, aren't they? You know, they, they, they're like, um, yeah. Yeah, get yeah, yeah, yeah. Cats are very much more independent. So, yeah, dogs for me now. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. What do they say? Dogs have owners. The cats have staff. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> very much, yeah. Do you prefer being social or would you rather be on your own? If I really want to do serious painting, I'd rather be on my own because other, otherwise I'm too social. So I end up not concentrating enough because <laughs> I love people's company. I love the company of other painters. Because you can't do but... meditation with a group of people. No, and also you up. end up, especially if you're painting with people that you consider to be better than you, and you go and have a look at what they're doing, it can sort of mess up your head a bit. Because ah. <laughs> you think, oh, how did he do that? I wish I'd done that painting. And you go back and look at your own, and you just see all the mistakes. So, yeah, if I'm painting I'd, and I'm doing it seriously, I'd rather be on my own. But then I'd like, then I like to. So if I'm with a group of painters, I'll wander off and I'll try and get far enough away from them so that I can't see what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not competitive, <laughs> right? So you'd rather be social outside of painting too, I would imagine. Is that correct? Or would you rather well, be think, alone? I, I think so. But my wife says that I'm only social when it suits me. Do it better. <laughs> to see, she, so we're going to parties sometimes where I don't really want to go, and then I'm antisocial, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Complex person, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, are you a morning person or a night owl? Morning person. Um, what subject would you be okay never hearing about ever again? COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You probably have a lot, <laughs> a lot of people. Pandemic. There's a few words yeah, I could chuck pandemic. in that bin too. I, <laughs> I know. Um, have you read any books lately that you think everybody should read? No, I'll tell you what I did read during lockdown, which I'd never read before. My brother gave it to me, and it's it's uh, based on a true story. So it's nothing to do with art. But I read um, In Cold Blood by. Truman Capote. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's probably one of the only books that has almost made me cry at the end. It's so, I got so into it. It was such an amazingly well-written book, but it was a true story, and that was mm-hmm. quite, yeah, it's, yeah, that's a, that's, I think everyone should read that, but it's not a happy book, is it? No. <laughs> it's, ama- it's, a, it's an amazing story. It's an amazing book. But it's an award-winning book, for sure. Yeah, and it's brilliant, yeah. All right, Marie, this is, come on, rapid fire, fire, one, fire another one off right now. Um, what is your favorite music genre? <laughs> I'm I, I'm um, embarrassed to say that I like the '80s music because that's when I re- it reminds me of my youth. The '80s American 80, music? '80s Amer- Amer- no '80s British music. Okay, yeah. right, right. Like post, who? Tell us. Post punk, I like the Smiths and the Cure. Of course, and all yeah, those things, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What I listen to. I listen to that when I'm going along. But I have quite a diverse music taste. But I often I often find myself listening to that stuff when I'm driving along. Yeah. There's so many great bands out of England that, that came up, and there's so many in the Smiths era too. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, Squeeze yeah. is a little bit previous oh, to them. Yeah, brilliant. but but uh, you know, um, yeah, well, no, the guys in the guy that's in uh, Chris Difford out of Squeeze lived in the village where I live. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They yeah, all, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. Well, Paul McCartney lives three miles away from me too. My God, oh, where do you so live, far. Carl? This is the, I live, I, I live in, I live near Rye. And I, it's just, it's an hour and a bit from London. And it's probably the, one of the most beautiful little areas in the southeast England. So nice. I think that coupled with the fact that it's so close yeah. to London, we get quite a lot of. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't see Paul McCartney as somebody who would settle. Somebody no, he <laughs> lives. He's lived here. He's been here. He's got a farm up the road. He's lived there like forty years. That's yeah. his main house. He's been yeah. here for forty years. Yeah. Nice place. It's the doors. The doors were British too, weren't they? they no, were no, they were Americans. <laughs> they see, there you they... Go. <laughs> right. The one that I people. The other one. I like Crosby, Steele, and Nash. They were a brilliant American band. Right. Yeah. 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 Very popular. You didn't go any any of the folk route, huh? You didn't do Peter Paul and Mary. Well, Crosby. Or... I've never heard of him before. No, I've heard of the folk. The only things I know about folk is people like John Wimborn and people like that. Uh huh. Gotcha. John Wimborn and um, yeah, no. All right. My daughter. My daughter's a folk singer. You're we, being serious. You. Ha- we we've come. You're not being serious about, about 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 Peter and Paul and Mary though, right? 
Oh, Peter, I, th- I thought it was Peter, Paul and Mary. I, I thought he said Peter, Paul, Mary. Sorry. I think I've never heard of Peter, Paul, Mary. But yeah, no, Peter, Paul and Mary. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Congratulations. Peter, Paul, Mary. Sorry. Carl, you were the first <laughs> one. You were the first one to get actually to the full end of the interview. <laughs> we have totally beaten this thing down. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I was gonna say he was, he's living under a musical rock or something. If he has that, I, I was Peter like, well, he's, <laughs> he's from England. He might not have heard of Peter Paul Mary. I, 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 Paul, I, I went along Paul with Paul that. Mary. I thought you said Paul Mary. <laughs> yeah. Peter Paul Mary. Peter, yeah, I don't know that clown. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got. I think he's got a hair uh, shampoo line. I think is Paul, Paul Mary. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Carl! This has been a hoot. Yeah, it's been great, yeah, Carl. You. I'm glad uh, you're coming really, back. <laughs> and I was so excited to be coming over and flattered that I've, um, yeah. you know, I feel honoured that I'm in in the Glenelg East. Actually, send me any questions as you prepare for your journey and okay. um, yeah, travel safe. Obviously, maybe take you take it easy getting over here, but I think it's yeah. going to be a good summer this summer. Absolutely, let's hope so. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't come around quick enough. Oh, yeah, yeah our, our producer said, well, well, they've actually widened the back road. So when you're out there, so just. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think it's possible he actually will get like a Ford Fiesta. I think we'll, I will this yeah, time. We'll get you yeah, something yeah. that doesn't go over 40 I'll, miles an oh, hour. Hopefully went, electric. Just, I've got one funny story. I went to, um, before lockdown, I went, I got invited by Skip Whitcomb to go to Colorado and paint at Steamboat Springs. Uh-huh. And it was, um, I met Jill Carver and a few people there, which was fantastic. Right. But I went to the airport and I ordered a Dodge Ram, you know, because I thought I'm going to need a decent oh, vehicle for the snow. Right. Five, five and a half litre V8. The thing was useless in the snow and I got to Steamboat and oh, yeah, they all took the Yeah, they're all rear wheel drive. You said you didn't get a four wheel drive. I thought. I said I thought they were all four wheel drive. <laughs> I got the only two wheel drive run in North America. That would be tough in Colorado if it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I'm surprised they even rent those things. Out. <laughs> that was the opposite to where you are. That was just, that was like minus seventeen, minus eighteen degrees when we went there. That's too cold. Right. Right. Well, here everybody buys the four by fours and the. Rear wheel, front wheel drive, and then they're made fun of until we get eight, <laughs> six inches of snow, and then they're the big heroes around town because they push everything around. But yeah. um, two wheel drive in Colorado. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right, Carl. Thank you good. very much. Thank you very much, man. I'm Appreciate really looking it. forward to meeting you guys and everyone else. So yeah, it'd be great. All right, look forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Take care. Thanks. Safe travels Bye. until then. Thank you. Bye bye. Right. The Plein Air Easton podcast is brought to you by the Avalon Foundation and was produced by Nick Richards. Our theme music was generously provided by Blue Dot Sessions. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. You can learn more about Plein Air Easton at pleinairesteon.com.